Hey everyone, Ruben here. So uh, this video is just gonna be talking about like how would we go about um, working through behavioral problems. And really what it comes down to when you're working with behavioral problems, um, first we have to understand that the, the behavior problems that you are seeing, the outward display of whatever it is, is more often than not a symptom of an underlying issue, okay? So um, something in the environment is contributing to what our dogs are doing, okay? So we gotta understand that part first. And then it's really just a matter of breaking things down, okay? So regardless if your dog is leash reactive, if they are barking out the window, if they are dog aggressive, if they're human aggressive, we've gotta break it down. Okay, and so depending on the severity of your issues, you know, you might be breaking things down a lot more, right? Uh, like if your dog was human aggressive, for example, the first thing you might want to do is like muzzle train them so they can wear a muzzle comfortably. And um, then you can like work with your dog feeling safe, knowing that they can't put their mouth on you. Um, and that's the same thing would go with like dog aggression types of stuff. You know, you muzzle condition them so they're really comfortable wearing the muzzle um, so that you can work them through these things, okay? And then we might get into like, okay, let's work on the basics, okay? This is something that we are always hammering, always hammering, like work on the basics, right? It's like, again, if, if your dog is leash reactive, let's forget about the leash reactivity and like, let's look at the walk with no distractions. You know, uh, if your dog can't walk well on a leash when there's nothing around, that's where we need to start first, okay? And if your dog can walk well on the leash with no distractions around, okay, let's look at what kind of tools we're using, right? And see like, what, what does this situation look like um, in order for us to be able to block the behavior, right? and teach them something new. Um, so you want to start with the basics, okay? That's like leash work, place work, uh, loose leash walking, sit down, you know, all of these things give our dogs guidance, okay? So we're gonna get, so we gotta get the obedience on board, okay? Preferably both on leash and off leash because all of that work that you're gonna be doing getting up to that point is, um, really just giving you a bunch of leverage for when you do go out and start working your dog around the areas that they struggle with, okay? Then there's going to be the like lifestyle component of this thing, okay? So we can't just train the dog and keep doing what we're doing because again, we're in the environment. So it's, it's very likely that something that we're doing is also contributing to what our dogs are doing, okay? So we also have to examine us, okay? And um, we're going to limit affection, okay? If our dogs are sleeping in bed with us, we gotta stop that. If our dogs are snuggling on the couch with us, we gotta stop that. Um, we gotta stop free roaming. We gotta stop contributing to a possible entitlement type of behavior or mindset coming from our dogs, okay? Um, now, this isn't like an exact recipe, but these are things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis and I have done with my own personal dogs that tells me this works, right? Because the whole thing is, is we, gotta, we gotta create a baseline, right? We gotta create an, an even playing field so that we can actually see what is what's making our dogs tick. You know, how do certain things affect our dogs? right but if if they're doing all the things all the time it's going to be it's going to be really hard for us to pinpoint um specific areas okay so we got to create a baseline so like if your dog is not sleeping in a crate we should have them sleeping in a crate um lots of structure in their day you know and uh you might already have structure going on in your day and that's awesome we might just need to add in a little bit more structure because again there's there's pieces missing right and so 
I mean, that's oftentimes why people hire us is because we can help you find those little missing pieces and uh, start to clean those areas up, right? I mean, it'd be no different than if I went to go hire a personal trainer um, for exercise purposes, you know, so that they can point out the areas that I'm missing, right? And help clean up my technique so that I can actually get the results that I want, you know? Um, but I'm also like, I'm not going to the gym, but also like eating McDonald's every day and Burger King and drinking ton tons of soda and smoking cigarettes and drinking beers. And, you know, I'm not doing that. Like that, that's the lifestyle part of it, right? Like if I want to have, you know, the beach body or something like that, it's like, I can't just do one thing without the other. All right. So it's the same thing with the dogs. We can't do one thing without the other. And, um, you know, we have a, like a go home packet that we send home to folks and it's super structured. And we tell everyone this all the time. It's like, it's super duper structured. And we realize that, you know, and we also understand it's a means to an end. It's, it's not a way that you, we want you to live with your dog forever. It's just the way for us to create that baseline, figure out what's going on with our dog. And then when we start getting the better behavior, then we can start to bring back some of these privileges, but we don't want to bring them back too soon, you know, too much, too fast, uh, because we could derail all the work we have done. But as you start to reincorporate these things back into your life, you know, and the dog isn't doing all the things, you can actually start to see like, oh, okay, what happened when I let Fido be on the couch with me last night, you know? Did he start barking at the dog out the window? Did he pull on the leash? Did he blow you off when you tried to call him in from the park? You know, um, all of these things are gonna give you a little bit more insight as to where your dog is at, you know? And something that we say all the time to our clients is like, so you go through your 90 day mark and the dog does something that you haven't seen in the last three months, you know, and then you can actually see like, oh, what happened? Oh, I let him on the couch while we were watching TV last night. And uh, now he's like blowing me off or something like that. So those are the things that you can be able to see. And it's not that the couch is bad. All it means is that we need to go back to doing what we were doing before and pattern this behavior more create the habits more, just really ingrain the dog into these new, this new way of life. And then we can try this again in the future, right? I mean, it's the same thing with like the bed and the couch and free roaming abilities. You know, all of those things can go to our dog's head sometimes, you know? And so we need to just be looking at things critically and understanding like, okay, we might have to go back to the structure, you know, but that's easy. We, we've already been doing the structure. We can go back to doing what we were doing before because we got a little derailed. We're going to get back on track again, and then we're going to try this again in the future. All right. Um, but that's about it guys. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not that hard, but it's not that easy as well because we understand that, you know, a whole lifestyle shift, it's hard, you know, changing the way you've been doing things is hard. Uh, and we know that the, the reality is though, it, that's what it requires. You know, if we want to get better behavior from our dogs, if we want to ask them for more, um, if we want to have the dog that people, Oh, wow, that dog is so good. You know, I can't believe it. Right. That's, that's the result of tons and tons and tons of work. It's not easy. And that's the hard part when it comes to the dogs. You know, it's easy just to share love and affection and all that stuff with them. Um, but it's hard to maintain this, you know, self-discipline to like not pet our dogs when it's not appropriate or, you know, because we don't want to reinforce certain behaviors on accident or, you know, addressing something in the moment. Like those things are tough. You know, saying no to the dog in the bed, saying no to the dog on the couch, having them sleep in their kennel at night. Those things are hard, especially if they've been sleeping in bed for the last, you know, year, six years, whatever, right? It's like, those things are tough and we know it. And so, um, but that's the recipe, you know, that is the, um, that's kind of like the outline of how to go about 
at least you know the like the blueprint of how you would want to break this down uh, in order to start remedying these problem behaviors you know uh, but again before we before I take off it's like we just have to remember that usually our our problems that we're experiencing with our dogs is a symptom of an underlying issue it is very rare that we get calls in here that the dog does everything to a T and is still having behavior problems. They walk well on the leash, they come when called every time, you know, they know place work, they know how to chill, they know how to be calm on command. You know, it's, it's very rare that we get those. Honestly, we've never had that dog come in. Um, and, it, and even in the other trainers that I know, that I've done apprentices with, that I've shadowed with, like, I have never seen a dog come in who's already been doing all of these things. And the owner has also done the lifestyle component of this as well, and they're still experiencing behavioral problems. Not that it doesn't exist. I'm just saying that it would be very rare that the dog does all of these things and is still having behavioral problems, all right? So if we wanna to get to the root of it, we've gotta start at the baseline. Get a training on board, lifestyle shift, you know, how we live with our dog definitely matters. So um, anyway, this was just like a quick little video uh, talking about how we would go about, um, I guess, dissecting behavioral problems um, and just how to go about doing that. All right. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.